right, guys, get out. And about four years ago, a company came out, did some work on it. Um, they went ahead and uh, serviced it, a sealed system. And if you can see on these refrigerator, uh, Brandon pointed out that this was a 600 unit, the company is so we changed the compressor on it it's been more juice but uh but all of a sudden my ice the air codes we put up on the screen we went in and compressor current which when you get those kinds of errors a lot of time it may be the compressor uh inverter board so I went ahead and ordered the inverter board and the compressor and tried the inverter board first and I still was getting repeating failures. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace this compressor and install it with 600 a and show you guys how to remove it and replace it. This one already started to remove because we wanted to get some of the, the beginning stuff out of the way so that we could do the whole job in front of you. Um, this is a 600A unit and it has lock ring fittings. You can see here and here where the dryer filter was and the just vent that out into the air. And you, after I flushed it out, I cut out the old lines from the old compressor. Now, this is not the old one. I'll explain to you why this compressor is here, what we're doing. And I was gonna go ahead and change it myself. This discharge line on the compressor, if you can see here, was bent in the box and I tried to straighten it out and it sheared right off. And it was the only line I had left to braze on. So we got stuck with this line not being able to Rick, is it possible to increase the size of your screen, please? To the compressor. So we're going ahead and pull this one out. So that we'll go through the diagnostic. Yeah. Which screen are you talking about? The error codes? No, the compressor you're working on right now. Okay, hold on. What do you see as the main screen? The, the error, error code. code. Okay, hold on. Can hear us better. Guys, can we get another mic check, please? We switched the devices. Yes, can hear a lot better and good visual of the compressor. We apologize, guys. Look, that's we, we depend on your feedback. If something's not looking good, stop us. Hey, check it out. But if we don't know, we're just going to keep going. So we beg your pardon, but thank you. Yeah, so this, we this is live in the kitchen. Too. This is live, you know. So we, we don't we're, we're we're doing our best. Apologies. Okay. So you can see the lock ring fittings here. These were this is your step valve, and this is the uh, coming from your Yoder loop, and it goes into dryer filter, which will add on. And I didn't want to cut beyond this until I needed to, so I cut the dryer filter out, leaving some pipe on, and. You can see here on this compressor here, this discharge line, if you can zoom in just a little bit on that, that was bent and I brazed everything else in and I was about ready to braze the, the condenser to it. But when I went to straighten it out, the pipe completely sheared off right at the compressor. So this is a new compressor and I can rig this in my shop a little bit easier to add a pipe and reuse this compressor on, on something. But we went ahead and we're just going to go and install a brand new compressor. So we're going to take this one out. He's going to remove these and we're going to add them to the next compressor. And we're going to go ahead and charge it with 600A and show you guys how to do that live. So you guys got any questions before we get started with the work? No, no. Good, thank you. Okay. And then we'll go through diagnostics after and check everything out. Guys, listen, good morning to everybody. How y'all doing? Look, again, sincere apologies for the audio. We're trying to give y'all the best experience and we take pride in that, you know? So thank you for the feedback. For those who just came in, because 
It's a, it's a couple of people that I let in late. Remember, this, you could just discharge it into the air. It's good to run the hose. Do we have the hose, my chance? Not here. Okay, we have the, they can't see me, hold on. We have the hose, we have the discharge hose in our school. This is Rick's real refrigerator. This is his personal one. So we missing the discharge hose, but again, you can't cut and just let that R600 into the air. It's good to open the windows, right? Yes. They open the windows, have a fan circulating. You know, you want that air to get out of there. That R600, correct me if I'm wrong, it stays at the bottom, right? Yeah. Because it's heavier than oxygen, right? Yeah. So all of it is going to be at the lower portion of your floor. The other, right. the other thing is, it's very, very highly recommended that you guys have a portable fire extinguisher with you just in case anything happens. Like I said, the original compressor that was on here was put in with lock ring fittings, and that's good. But when you have to replace the compressor, it's already been put in with lock ring fittings. Every time you use lock ring fittings, you have to cut your tube shorter. So, you know, you technically you would cut this out. And if you had to, you'd, you'd add pipe to it and you can braze on once you've totally cut it out and totally flush the unit out. We're not demonstrating how to do that today. We're going to go ahead and just remove this one and go ahead and put a brand new compressor on here. And I'm going to let Brandon take over as far as the repairs. If he wants to braze a filter on here uh, or just remove these lock rings and then braze it in after, uh, that's his decision on how he wants to attack this one. So he's going to demonstrate the whole repair and, and we'll go through it a uh, little bit at a time. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, but we please ask that you know that you stay muted during the time so we can record this and not have a bunch of feedback. If you got any questions before we get started. Okay, guys, look, you, you see this you see this nightmare here? Let's pause the scenario and be realistic. This, this is a, a simulation to help you learn. But in real life, you may go behind somebody that that like a company or a customer that may say, hey, somebody else has been out here. And when you get there, you don't know what you're gonna look at. And you may run into one of these. It's all busted apart. It's all torn up. It's all destroyed. So I'm gonna take a step back before I begin this. And let's just identify some things and let's see what we're dealing with here, okay? Let's see what's missing and let's see what's our, our situation. So they left us at the minimum, our service port. We got that, okay? We have our suction. You could tell it's R600 by the red tape all over the place. Okay, so we got our suction, our discharge line. It looks like it's destroyed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut here. I think you just get a little help with the camera while I look. I'm gonna cut here so that this is all nice and clean. All this I'm gonna get rid of so that when we put in our new compressor here, you know, it'll go right in. Uh, other than that, we're gonna have to get our 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 uh, filter dryer. Put that in here, and I think the repair will be good. I don't like this though. Somebody was here before, so look what they did by using too much heat. Look what they did to the Molex, Rick. Yeah, I saw it. Also. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Well, that may be, uh, we'll see what, what goes on with that, but let's get the uh, surgery on the way. Any questions so far? You can't find a dry filter? I have it in my van. I have a few of them. Okay. All right. Okay, so what do we use, a turbo torch? Yeah. Can you pass it to Rick? Can you just record do that part, please? Thank you. It's off. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just show me. Just do my camera guy. Okay. And we're gonna need a wrench. A pair of pliers to, to handle this hot stuff. Give me one second. Ah. Yeah, I got it here too. Okay. okay, let's get this show on the way. All right. Rick likes turbo torch. I'm more of an oxyacetylene guy.
Now, guys, before I begin this, right? When I when I'm doing this, notice I'm gonna put my my flame this way, cause I don't want to put it this way and mess with my condenser fan side. I don't want that. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it over here and control my flame. You know, I'm also gonna be cautious of this little uh, Molex here. So again, I'm gonna be very concentrated just in this area here with my flame going that way. Okay, did you get the rest or no? You did? You did. You did. Okay. No, I like this guy better. Yeah. Thank you, man. All right, let's get this show on the way. Okay, again, I'm going to control my flame. And I'm not going to start pulling yet. I'm going to pull when this thing liquefies, when all this solder liquefies. And whoever was here looked like they put a lot on. So I may have to heat this up for a while, but we'll get it off. Give it a few seconds. I may have to use a little bit more heat. Okay, now look, this is still a hot weapon. This is still a live weapon. If anybody's been to a gun range or anything, you know, you, you, you still have to control the weapon even after you shoot it. So th this is my brother's floor. So if I mess it up, I'm okay. I think so. But a customer, maybe not. So again, you want to control your tip and put it somewhere that you know is safe. Okay, let's just get that out the way. Number two, these pipes are super hot, right? I don't want to get in there and touch them because I'm going to burn myself. So, you know, I'm going to navigate around some of, the, some of this other pipe here and uh, try to get this guy out without killing myself. All right, he's out of here. Okay, again, even this compressor, I don't want to be reckless with it. I want to make sure that I put it somewhere good. So I'm going to put it right back in the box I got it. Guys, I'm just showing you how it might get down. <coughs> I like a clean area when I work. You want to take the valve off? I got valves. Okay. If not, we, we cut it off. Okay, that takes care of that. All right. Now we got our new compressor. Let's look at it. Okay. A couple things I like to look at before I look at uh, before I put in the new compressor is obviously I want to make sure that my nomenclature is good. If you notice over here on the compressor, it says, R hold on, let me do this. It says R600, and it also tells you the uh, the voltage, okay? So, again, you want to make sure that you're putting in the right compressor over here. If you see, it says R600, and it also is, uh, you want to make sure that if it's a 120, 240, you know, you want to just make sure that the nomenclature matches the old compressor, all right? Okay, so now another thing I want to look at before I put in this compressor is these little plastic tabs here. I want to make sure that they, they've been put in. And when I pull one out, I should see it here like suction, like and let's see if we hit. I'm gonna wait for that. Just just wait. In the meantime, I'm gonna make sure that my grommets, my little dampening devices, they all good, they all set. What happened to the little bolts that went in there? No, oh, they're laying in that tray that I gave you. Okay. It should be right with me. All right. All right, so now I got all the sound dampening devices in. You said that this is the, the tray right here? Are the bolts going in there? No. I'll just set it in there and I'll bolt it down. Don't worry about right. bolting it, it's gonna take too long. All right, no problem. All right, this guy kind of cooled down now. I could deal with him. All right, so I put all the little dampening in place. 
please. Okay. Now, couple things with this situation here. We got to know what we're looking at. Obviously, this is our, our process stub. This is our Hassad. You could tell it's the smaller diameter of the two. And then this is going to be our discharge, our suction. This guy back here. Can you, so, move, can you move that pipe that gets This one? Yeah, that's in the way. Okay. I can't see what you're looking No problem. No problem. Well, apologies. I'll, I'll say Should it I again. again. Sure. You got this guy over here. This is going to be our, 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 our process stuff. This is where we would do our evacuation, our charging, our vacuuming. All of that is going to be done in this stub here. This one is smaller of the two. So this one is going to be our high side, our discharge. This one's going to go here to the condenser. It's no way that this crap is going to fit into this. So again, we may have to cut a little bit, sand it up, and then slot it in nice and pretty. Same thing with this one here. Okay. Again, couple things to consider. Let's be careful with this. The last guy that was here, look what he did. All right. So again, now that we know the situation, let's get the prep work done. Let's start with getting this set up here. When it comes to tube cutting, guys, it's like don't cut don't cut too much, and then you don't have enough. You only want to cut what's necessary. First, let me straighten this out. Bear with me, y'all. Okay. It'll make for an easier cut. I'm gonna cut right here, right at the point where the solder is 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 all finished. Okay, now that I've put it on, I I'm not cranking down on it. I just got it on there snug. Now that it's on there snug, I begin to turn. When that gets too easy, then I'm gonna intensify just a quarter of a turn, very gently, and do that again until it becomes relatively easy. Then I'm gonna do the same. Now, while he's saying you go gentle, it's because if you torque it down too tight, you crush the pipe and it's not round again. It's like egg shape. And then when you try to connect it to another pipe, it don't fit. Now, mind you, this is a stronger metal, so it, it, it may take a little more than copper. But we'll be patient with it. We're not going to work like animals. Nice and civil. Measure twice, cut once. Nice, beautiful. Show that. That's a nice, good cut. All right. So now I don't want to. I don't want to put this thing in here with all this red tape. So I'm going to remove that red tape. Let me get some sandpaper here, and we're going to begin our sand. Thank you. Now, guys, one thing when it comes to sanding, Rick taught me this trick. I, I used to sand like this. I would just put it over, and then I would just do this song and dance and come from the bottom. But Rick taught me a good trick. What he did was he, he taught me he would strip these little things like so. And then what he taught me was he would go like this, and he would come over. So like that, you would get 360 degrees around the pipe. You want to show the demonstration? Yeah, you do. I was going to hold it for you while you do it because this one won't be as easy to do because when you when you do it, like the ones on the compressor are easy, but because this thing moves back and forth, it's not that easy to do that. Either. Now, guys, sometimes you may get these discharge lines and they may have like a black liquid over them. You got to get this thing shiny. Don't put it in there with that black stuff on there. You heard? Okay, so that's a good one. Now I'm going to clean up this one too. Again, it's important to prep, guys. It helps, it helps for an easy, easy work. Okay. Okay. Now I don't want to take my hands because they got oil and, and a little bit of sweat on them, and I don't want to do that. I just want to leave that alone. All right. So now that I got that. Let's go ahead and get these two guys in here now. So listen for the sound. Very light, but I did hear it. Yeah, the first one didn't, didn't have it either. So what they do is they pressurize these compressors with nitrogen to keep air and moisture out of them when they're, when they're in the boxes and stuff. And if you don't hear any pressure when you take these lines off of the compressor, 
uh, it, it is susceptible, especially if it's a 134A unit because the oil absorbs a lot of moisture. So you don't want to use a compressor that if there was no pressure inside of it, it could be contaminated. Listen, guys, another thing too. Y'all see this discharge line? Notice when I put it in, right? I put it in. I don't have facet, just the tip. No, I put it in. And here's why. Because as I solder, I don't want that solder to back up in here. So watch how deep I put it in there. I don't just go, oh, I'm good. No, in all the way. So she it can't no more. All right. Now this one, same thing. Oh, a little bit of the oil came out. No, it's all good. This one here, I'm gonna bend this a little bit. Some of that oil just said Do you have a uh, tube bender? No, no, I have one. Give me a second. Guys, this, this tube here, I, I don't want to really fight with it and bend it. Look, see this? It's not. Well, you know what I could do? I can take advantage of it. Now, let me get my tube bender. Screw that. Oh, give me one second, guys. Brandon, look. Just take and move the move the suction line on a compressor. I messed up, man. Ah, I messed up. Try to straighten that line a little bit and bend it a little. Straight to that there you go. There you go. Straight to that. No, 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 no. You created the monster. There you go. Oh, you're no. going to leave me the nightmare. I straight, I straightened the right. now. You're going to leave me the nightmare. All right. So let's get this guy in here. Are we live? Are we still yes. live? Is We're the still audience live. together? Uh -huh. Oh, let me get my bearings here. All right. Okay, goes in like so. Boom. So this one this way. This way. Um, okay, a second. Give me one second, guys. Reliable. I really don't want to waste the people's time while I'm trying to figure this out. So you created this line, maybe I didn't create it. I inherited it. This is 516th line. You want to make sure that. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. You gotta go slowly because if you don't have it on the right side or whatever, you can kink it. Looks like a beauty. So I have to straighten that out a little bit to get it in there. Okay. Now you good. Now you left me something to work with. All right, guys. Now let's get in here and get this rick. Yes. She's not going in. You know why? Because she's crushed. So what we're gonna do is cut. She's crushed. Somebody pinched her or did something, or they put too much solder. I think it's a solder. And oh yeah. So then you know what? Up. Let's heat it up. We'll heat it up and then put it in. Pull the compressor out some and heat up that line so you don't heat up the condenser fan. So what I do is I do the suction line and then put it back in and do the discharge after. Watch this. And one thing you guys got to be careful is that whole condenser fan down there. Uh, let, me, let me get this right. The condenser fan is all plastic, the blade and, the comp and this, as well as that Molex and the holder here. So you got to be very careful with the amount of heat you apply. What I normally do is I would pull the compressor out, braise the suction line out here, then stick it back in and then do the discharge line after so you don't have to worry about melting any of the plastic. I agree with you, right? But I'm gonna challenge that. Well, the, you're gonna do the, it. The reason, yes. exactly. And the reason why I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna mess with this suction line and bend that too much up in here. Okay. So I'm gonna do everything right here on That's the fine. control flame. <laughs> All right, so we got that taken care of. Let's get him in here. Yeah, but this remember this ain't this ain't it. Okay, what about the forty five? I got it. Okay, let me get this so I can see better.
God, she's a real bitch. Sorry for my language. This is what we're gonna do, guys. This here, this is damaged. We're gonna cut this off and we're gonna run new one, all right? In the meantime, let's get this discharge line on. I mean, this discharge line. We will have this in in the next 10 minutes, watch. No questions about it. Better than I can do. Oh, <laughs> so we need it. One, right? You want me to fix that suction line real quick? Huh? Want me to fix that suction line for you? Yeah, can you do me a favor yeah, and start cutting? Can I get in there and I'll take care of that? What? Well, hold on. This will take a second. How much? How much? Um, do you want me to leave on Whatever this? Whatever you want. To use me, I would. I would cut about this much off, though. Me personally, because you, unless you're gonna have this, and then you're gonna have a big flare up. It doesn't matter. You want it? That's why I asked you. It's, it's your. It's your fridge, bro. Let me get in there and go ahead. Cut sure, that for sure, you. sure, sure, sure. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna refix this. Uh, that's not your mind. Can you fix that camera? Yeah. Any questions about what we're doing so far? What's going on? So I'm gonna go ahead and take and cut this short, and then I got enough pipe I can I can fix this. So I'm gonna take a big piece off of here. I'm also cleaning up this this uh hey it's Mel. I do have a quick question. Hey Mel, long time no here. Hey, hey. Yeah, real quick. Uh I know I remember um in uh one of the classes I attend with Richard. Um trying to remove that line there was a bit of a flame is that due to just the the rubber overheating or was that due to a bit of like trace butane in the in the line that was the grommet heating that was the oh. grommet because this is a new compressor there was no oil in in that unit and the last compressor was a new one but it had a had a broken line that's why what we replaced today was the one with the broken line we're not replacing the original compressor that was given the air code that we had at the beginning we okay. already took it out by the time some people came in late. So again, I, I, I have a video on bending, so I'm not going to go too much, but we have three different sizes, quarter, five, sixteenths, three eighths. You make sure you put it in the right size. If you're in the wrong uh, tubing size, you will kink it when you go to bend it. So. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the, in the center one, which is 5 sixteenths. I can get it in there. And I'm going to go ahead and just create that bend there to get it on the compressor. I'm trying to create a sweeping bend here so it's not too tight. It'll be enough for Brandon to, to raise that baby back in. This should go in though. I still get a nightmare. Give me the um, there's a switch in the box behind it. Right there, that switch on the hammer. Okay, this you have to be very careful. You don't want to bang on the compressor too much, but I'm just gonna hit it in just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay. We have an issue with that uh suction line, guys. Suction line is a little bit what's up. I think it should go in there just nice now. Oh, she's a beauty. Okay. Okay, I got it. Get all the way and let Brandon take over the rest of the job. All right. Uh, okay, so now that's in there. Let's make sure we're good with the camera. Okay. Boom, boom. Okay, so now let's get our process stuff. Put that back. I already sanded it, guys. So that's in there. Now let's get this lit up. For this, I'm not going to use 45 flux. I'm just using regular um, crystals. 
No, not no, the saw, the 15. I gave you a stick. Oh, 15 percent. Oh, yeah, you did right here. Okay, got it. That's why I said try to keep the area clean so that you know where your stuff is. Yeah, if you're not organized, you take twice yeah. as long to do the same job. Yeah, trying to find the two. Again, guys, when I strike this, I'm striking away from anything. I'm not like doing this and then this. I'm striking away. Guys, I'm gonna get some heat, Joe, and put on that wheel because it's at a very difficult angle for me. Or I get my um oxyacetylene that has a more controlled torch because this turbo torch is so big and reckless. Let me get um heat, Joe. I'll give you a thermal paste. Did you give me the thermal paste? Where's the thermal paste? It's here. Okay. All right, so y'all see this? This is like a heat absorbing gel. I'm gonna put some of this stuff over here by this uh right here. That shit is hot as Hold on, y'all. This is super hot. Sorry, this is not recommended, but I'm not touching that. No way. Let me get my call on, guys. I'm gonna call an audible. Do any of you have any questions so far while we're doing this? That paste that you used a little earlier to try and connect um, the suction line. Okay, now that's just to make a. This. You're talking about the flux? Yeah, yeah. That's this just to make here? a better connection, right? Well, the flux helps reduce oxidization. As your heat tube, oxygen is released and everything, and um, it makes the tube dirty so oh. the solder doesn't stick. So the flux sort of like helps the solder flow. You can buy solder that's already got flux mixed with the solder sticks themselves. It's a little more expensive. Or you could just buy the paste and do the paste that way. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're back. I didn't like this one either. I'm gonna fix this. You notice I ain't burning up the wheel and the floor. I'm not a fan of that other one. It's a more controlled flame. See that? That's what I, see that look beautiful. Oh my God, she's a beauty. Oh, oh, well, boy. You see, you can't do that with that turbo torch of my masterpiece. Well, that one there, let's look at that suction. I mean, that discharge. That looks like a beauty. We're going to pressurize it. Let's look at that suction. Let's get some light in there. Show these fine folks. Your brothers be. Uh, She's a beauty. Oh, this is gonna be a service call for you. 
All right, so we got that going on. All right, guys, let's, let's take this opportunity. Let's take this opportunity to flush the system, okay? Let's look at what we got. We got an open system. Let's see who's paying attention now, okay? I'm going to come into this system, right? And what I'm going to do is apply nitrogen here. The nitrogen is going to then come out through the high side and go through my condenser. Once it flows through my condenser, follow my finger. Follow my finger. It's going to come into my yoder lines. And once it enters the yoder and it passes through, this is where it's going to exit. Okay, this is my high side. So again, I'm going to I'm going to blow in through here and I'm going to feel nitrogen come out through here. That tells me that my high side is good. This three way valve hopefully is in the home position. Can you verify that? Let's verify that this three way valve is in the home position. And what do I mean home position? Well, what we're looking at is two capillary tubes. One of these capillary tubes feeds the freezer evaporator. One of these other capillary tubes feed the fresh food evaporator. So what we're going to do is we're going to also have nitrogen coming from our suction going backwards. It's going to then travel through both of our evaporators through our two capillaries, also flushing the three-way and coming out of here. Any questions about this operation? Let's, let's also use 100 PSI. Okay, okay, hold on. This, me. Okay, chat. Let's read the chat. We got some stuff in the chat, guys. Is everyone to see real world? Oh, what's up, Nate? What type of solder are you using? for your stainless to copper. Stainless to copper, we use a 45 degree and the flux, 45% in the flux. It comes in a spool like this, and this, you just missing all the pretty. That's 45% means that's how much silver is actually inside of that metal mixture of that brazing rod. So the sticks that we use. And then we, this we, is fit copper to copper, 15%. Yeah, now they sell different sizes. You can look on the stick and you can actually read the percentage right on the stick. So 15 to me is enough silver to make brazing easy. I've seen five and 0%, which are horrible. Um, but 15 would be good for everything. You could even use 15 for copper to steel, but the 45 is better for copper to steel because it takes less heat to, to get the melting point. Another brand that finished up. Well, Michael Martin got a question. Michael Martin. Uh, Michael, I want to address you personally, bro. Again, this turbo torch, it's a real, it's a real animal. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. I like it. Me, I'm more of a control kind of guy. Me, I like to have control. Look at that, nice and pretty, you know? So why do I tell you that, Michael? Because normally, Michael, I definitely would have had a shield because he, he put up a good link for a shield. And he also made mention that one has to be cautious. And I agree with him. I wouldn't have done Notice I stopped the repair because I didn't feel confident in doing it without burning the condenser fan. And I went over to the uh, opposite setting. But in the event, Michael put up a wonderful link to get a shield. It's in the yeah, comment. I've used those turbo torch shields and made them myself. Um, I like them, but they, they wrap around the pipe and sometimes the flame shoots out sideways. So you got to be careful. Like, if you're doing that line on the on the um, the discharge line right there, it's so close to the fan that if if your shield is over the pipe and the flame's not going straight into the fridge, it will shoot out the sides. So you got to be careful. It's still 
it still can damage things. The shield only helps, but it's it's not you know fail safe. So you got to make sure that you, uh, you you're careful with that when you do that. Okay, guys. Now we're gonna put the three-way valve in the home position. The inverter board's not on. It might give you an error. You might have to plug in the inverter. Oh, but wait, we we have to plug in the three-way valve too. Yeah, that's that. Plug oh in. man, guys, cross your fingers. Ooh, cross your fingers, because without this, we're screwed. Just cut the plastic up there where it's not. Oh, let's see. Let's see if, she, if she'll cooperate. So it goes downwards. Nah, bro. Just, just cut the plastic piece off the bottom. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why it's important to take care, guys. So, somebody who's worked on the, the metal on this Romex, Molex connector got melted and now won't plug into the uh, three way valve. Three way valve. So, I'm just going to cut a little bit of that melted plastic. Should not be a big problem. Plastic melted off. Another thing we can do is does the uh, follow this plug. We still get charged and put on, but we might not be able to switch this to the home position so I get this plug. How many uh, pins is it? Five, but two or three in the middle are pretty bad shape. See if this will work. Huh? No, it's not big. No, I, I'll get that fixed. Just go ahead and let's uh, charge it up and, and run it without the valve connected. I'll get that fixed. Sorry, guys. I was, you know, you see, that's a real life situation where you come behind somebody and look, you know, they make the job. So we gotta keep on trucking. So let's keep on trucking. All right, so look, I'm just gonna have to put the filter dry in. Yeah, yeah go sorry, ahead. man. Go ahead, that's all right. All right, so guys, I'm gonna keep this on, me personally, and I'm gonna work with copper to copper. Now that that's on, I'm gonna take advantage and not have to mess with this dissimilar metal. I'm gonna use the lock ring instead, and I'm gonna put in my filter dry. Here's your standard filter draw. Well, uh, can you explain exactly what you were talking about, how you put it in the home position? Because someone asked. How yeah, somebody was asking about how to. Well, guys, the way you put it into the home position is you take the refrigerator power cord. You stick it in the wall. You count to 12, 1,001, 1,002. When it gets to 12, unplug it. And then your fridge will be in the home, the three-way, uh, will be in the home position. Home position simply means that both evaporators are accessible at the moment. Who asked that question, Alejandro? Alejandro, let me know if that answered your question, bro. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, guys, let's go ahead and put this filter dryer in. Okay? Now, this ain't gonna work. So I'm gonna have to make some type of situation where these two can operate. Same here. Okay, I can. Will this fit? No, that's too much too big. All right. All right, let me get a creative pair. Got a full sledding pair. You probably be in the field hatch. You're going to see some brother and be in the field hatch. I've done it with needle nose pipes. Watch this one. We're going to go here to here. Boom. And then we're going to put this one in here. And then boom. That's going to be this situation, okay? Cut the, cut the sledge off and it'll work just fine. Y'all see that? Look, look, real quick, guys. Look what I used, right? I went here to here. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? These two ain't going to fit. So I made this, uh, this little makeshift collar here. All right, let's get going with this now. Let's clean up. Put the light back over here if you can't see what you're doing. Just keep going. Let's get this out the way too. This is bothering me. 
this way. Now let's clean this up. But let's see what we got. Okay, guys, when you put in this filter dryer, this this access valve here is is for my hot side, so it's not like this where it goes to my low. Okay, remember if it's coming off the Yoda, the access valve gotta be on that side. So let's do our connection here. We're gonna go. Let's put this guy on first. Now notice that it's a little bit of slack here, so I'm gonna pinch it off. Yeah, those were just spare pieces that he's had. And he, he the thing is, is if you're going to do a sealed system, get yourself some spare pieces of 5 16 quarter inch and 3 8 tubing and uh, have them all ready. Like this way, in case you need to add tubing or the compressor you have isn't the exact replacement that you have to improvise sometimes to connect everything together. It's okay to add pipe or whatever. Guys, we're gonna put PSI on all this and check all these joints. Even though I think they're good, we're still gonna check our work. It's not acceptable. Guys, this is too much for me. I don't like this. So I'm gonna cut much of this off, sorry. Too much, too much going on here. Let's keep our work nice and... You got any problems with that, sir? No, that's I said, I'm letting you run the show. Thank you. Well, it's your fridge and, yeah. and I'm kind of just... <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get a bill when you're done. Oh, for sure. All right. Just put it to collections. <laughs> get, get behind everybody else who got their hand out for money. Hold on, guys. Let me just fix this filter. I don't like it. So everything he's doing is actually how it's going to happen in the field. You're going to have pipes that are bent and damaged. You're going to have things that are broken and you really have to assess the situation before you start the work. Um, it's a little hard for us to set up and, and check everything out prior to. So we're going through like, if we run into a problem, how are we going to fix it when we're done? We're doing it live. That's why we just said live. We didn't want to go through the whole refrigerator and have everything ready. We want to do like, what happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? And, and we're reacting in real time, just like as if we were doing the job in someone's home for the first time. This guy here to uh, which is hot to the touch, so let's let that calm down for a little bit. Hold on, y'all, because that thing hot to the touch. 
Okay, so we got to get this guy over here somehow. How the hell are we going to do that? Can we do it? No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want you to do it. What I'm going to do is cut. I'm going to have to cut this off, guys. Sorry. We're going to cut this off, okay? It's too much. We're going to cut this off. It's too much. I don't know if the heat would compromise the uh, the the blue liquid you put inside the lacquering. I don't think the heat would compromise the fitting itself because fitting just super massive compressed. And I don't know if being that close would actually affect it. It is possible, but um, we don't put enough heat where it's going to damage the lacquering fitting. If you were right on top of it with the torch, it probably would mess it up. But other than that, I think it's okay. Guys, let me take that. I got one. Hold on, guys. Let me take that tape off. Ready? Oh, to the touch. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, I, we can't solder with that tape on. We gotta take it off. That stuff melts and that'll create a restriction. Oh now God. you should have uh, red electrical tape. And uh, when you're done, since he took all the tape off, technically the customer's home, you want to remark it with some electrical tape. And you can buy it in colors at your Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, this is just to let the other technician know not to put 134A in it, which was originally done to this refrigerator. Yeah? Yeah, that's, that's how I got this fridge, is that someone put 134A in it and messed it up. And then they just gave it to you? Well, they, they, they had a warranty company, and the warranty company ended up giving the customer a new refrigerator. So I went to install the old one, and this is how we got it. Bro, this tape is on here like, <laughs> sorry, guys, almost done. Got to come off, bro. And if it don't, it's going to kick my ass and get solid. Is it the same tape on it? Maybe you can lose Well, I got it most of them. He's all set, guy. It is a little bit that it can be soft. I'm saying the fuck about this. Uh, well, every refrigerant has a different color, um, but there's a whole bunch of colors to represent the tank of refrigerant, like blue, whatever. Um, you have to look that up. But as far as red, red wasn't so much an indication of type of refrigerant, like brand or whatever. It was only because the refrigerant was flammable in that R600A, which is what we're using. Um, there you can see the tank what we're using, R600A. Um, this has butane inside of it, which is highly flammable. So the removal of this compressor and ventilation of the gas and everything else prior to is super important. It just, in order for us to, to go over this, we have to, um, one second, we ran into an air. Yeah, don't worry. Nothing, brother, we can't fix. Does that go right inside the thing? No. Oh. Remember those two little guys? There we go. Man, this is a real pain in the wall. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. I wasn't. Uh, no, I'm going to have to change this. You know what? We're going to have to take this off. There's too much here. We're going to have to cut this because it's not enough. Sorry, guys. I miscalculated. Don't shoot me. I beg everyone's forgiveness. What time is it? It's one o'clock. 
All right, guys, just give me uh, five more minutes. Hold on. We'll have this in. Don't go nowhere. I didn't like it, Rick, and I didn't have a good feeling about it. It didn't meet my standards. Sorry, man. No, I appreciate that, you know, that if you feel it's not good enough quality and you're going to redo it, then yeah. I'd rather you do that than try to rush it. You know, I'll get this done in 30 minutes. No, nah, man, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have thanked me for that. Work like this, you know, you got to take your time, guys. Okay. Don't so rush gonna... a job. Even though we're filming it, we want to make sure that everything comes out nice. We want it, you know, so now I'm gonna get rid of this. This was crap. Let's put it in another one. This guy here. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut here and we're gonna cut here. Okay. Sorry guys, I didn't like it. And then the field, if you don't have a good feeling, go with your gut. You don't want to rush it and get it done and have a recall and come back after you brought in all the tools you need to do to do a sealed system. Yeah. Take your time, make sure it's done right. Make sure there's no leaks. Make sure everything looks good because quality does uh, matter. Uh, affect the customer's opinion on how, how you service it. Uh, well, we showed at the beginning an error code and we're, I'm gonna go back into diagnostics once this thing is hooked up. And we're going to uh, show you where we got the error code. I'm going to clear it out to make sure that the error code doesn't return in the future. Okay. Now this looks a lot better. Okay, so we're going to get this guy. Let's straighten this out. Okay, so this was going to come on here. Oh, I'm probably not a lot enough. Get out of here. move that. I like right. this one definitely. It looks better. Woohoo! Uh, hundred <laughs> percent. That's that's this. Guys, this is live. I'm sorry. I'm live. I'm live in the field. But look at this now. This looks better. Right? Look at that beauty. <laughs> All right, let's get this done and let's enjoy our Saturday, guys. First, we're gonna clean it up. So he's pinching it off because the pipe's a little bit larger than the other one, but when you pinch it and braise it, it's just like as if they're the same size pipe. Beautiful. Okay. Get some solder on here. Flux. Guys, make sure that your, your cores are out when you do this. I know that my core is out here. Oh, it's out, it's out. I know, but when we put it back about in. that tool. When you okay, so God, when, you, when, we, when we put in the new cores, we're gonna use this tool to tighten it, all right? Now guys, remember, somebody's gonna come behind us and hook up gauges. Let's not be pieces of crap and put this thing back there for them. Cause how they gonna get it, you know? Let's think about the next guy. Hopefully no one comes behind us, but you know, you wanna put it in a place that in the future is accessible. Everybody with me? Hello? Yes, yes sir, sir, yes sir, that's the way to go. Okay, Peter, we'll show you the error codes. We had it at the very beginning of the show. So uh, we'll put the error codes up after we're done.
some certain things, this the same calling you every day and, and keep you updated. I'm, I'm working, man. All right, so guys, the system I'm should. Be I'm working. I'm I that part, that's what I call you. I, I oh, somebody needs this to meet themselves. Service department. Yes. They have time. So now, guys, we're going to check our work, make sure that our system is pressurized. Let's go ahead and pinch this our high side off. Let's go ahead and get our uh, gauges. No, this is fine. Let's get our uh, nitrogen. OK, so guys, here we're going to go blue to low side. OK, and then we're going to go yellow. To our nitrogen tank. Right here, okay? So we're going yellow to nitrogen tank and we're going blue to low side, okay? Now, what we're going to do is open our nitrogen tank here. Make sure your, your gauges are closed. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we opened up our nitrogen tank and now we're gonna let in nitrogen here. I don't wanna exceed 100 PSI. If you exceed more than 100, you risk damaging one of the aluminum evaporators. They can't handle too much pressure. Right. Let's get the leak detector and let's see what we got. Now that we got, let's get our leak detector. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in our joints here. Everywhere that we solder, we're gonna check our joints. We're gonna check our work. Rick, you showing this? Okay. Yeah. Everywhere that we did our solder, okay? Now we're going to open up the PSI nice and easy because that's liquid. And when we give too much PSI, it's going to blow the, the, the look. Look what's happening already. Oh, man, what's that about? Brother B got a leak. Oh, man, Brother B's falling apart. Okay, well, so we got one. But let's let's give it a little bit more nitrogen. Hold the camera right here. Just hold the right here. Now we're going to give it a little bit more, not too much. Just a little bit. All right. Now look. Okay, so we know we got one there. So let's address that real quick. So you see guys, when you do this trick, it helps safeguard your work. You, you, you pressure test in your own work, you know? All right, so let me get this. This is where an inspection mirror helps, where you can check your braces. Sometimes if you have a leak, you're more, most likely will see it visually. We have an inspection mirror, but it's in my room. I'll stay it's okay. All right, let's, let's add some more uh, PSI here, and let's see if this thing now has failed to leak. That thing's hot to the touch, so let's... Uh, it may it may make a little sound. All right. But now she's on there. And now let's get the uh let's hopefully this thing this thing is okay now.
see bubbling up, thank God. Any of my other joints bubbling up, thank God. We want to make sure that our pressure is uh, cold. I still think we might have something down there. I don't know. Boop. Just slightly. No. We want to make sure that this is going up. So we're about 45 PSI. We're about 60 PSI. Let's do it. Let's take this opportunity and check our work again. Oh, she's a beauty. Come down here. Beauty. Rick is going to pay me money. All right, guys, I feel confident in my work. Let's go ahead with the vacuum now. Okay. Now, there's a lot of. Okay. We got to get our two Schrader valves and put them in here. Get two Schrader valves. I had, I had, um, hold on. Give me one second. Hold on, guys. We're missing the two pores. You know, those are really small uh, pieces. All right, I got two. Uh, I got a paper bag in my box. Thanks for this opportunity. You guys, got any questions? Well, uh, Brandon wants to go get something from the truck. This job typically takes about an hour and 10 to about an hour and 40 minutes um, from start to finish in someone's home. It is taking us a little bit longer because we're stopping to demonstrate and show you guys some things. So there are times uh, where it goes longer or shorter when you run into errors. What about the one that was on the other thing? They were taking oh, it's in the compressor. No, I think they were taking Rick, I have a question, please. Yeah, brother. Um, the capillaries that go into the three-way valve, what about if one of them is is, is restricted? So how would you it's find what? out? The it's capillary tube that goes go to um, the three-way valve? Yeah. Guys, what remember, remember what I said, though. Before we put this filter dry on, I said, take the opportunity while the filter drives removed to home the three-way in the home position so that when you push nitrogen, it's gonna push uh, nitrogen through both your capillaries. It's at that time that you, you're gonna clear out your restriction. Ah, okay. So look, I put my core in there. I got this tool. And I wanna listen for the click. Like a torque wrench. That's it. So that that that's on there good. But 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 we do have one major problem. We are missing one tiny little damn core that we had in here and it just walked away from us. What time is it anyway? It's 1 15. You wanna you wanna end the class? Because I feel bad these guys waiting for us to find a damn core. Guys, we apologize. We it's apologize, a, guys. It's okay, guys. The learning class is very your time is precious, but this is what we're dealing with. This is how it looks like in real life. So bear with us, okay? We're looking for a court. The other, the other compressor didn't have it in again? Take the one from the old one. I had to return it, so I gave it back to him. I mean, this guy over here, though. Oh, that one's taken out. Oh, we got them, guys. We found them. Woohoo! Yeah. You're the best, Rick. No, I'm just lucky. Okay, so there's that. Okay, where's our tool? 
Uh, the compressor, uh, when it was going bad, it was making a loud noise and it was going on and off. I checked the pressures and the high side was probably about 60 and the low side was about 20 PSI. Now this is 600A, 134A, we normally run about zero PSI on the low side when the unit's running. 600A actually runs between eight and 15 inches in a vacuum. So when you're charging 600A, it's normal for it to run into a vacuum um, because that gas runs at such low pressure. So don't think that if you're in a vacuum that you have a restriction or a leak on 600A because it normally runs that deep into a vacuum. Yeah. Okay, guys, so now we're going to do the vacuum. Again, we're going blue to, to suction, uh, process stuff, and then we're going to go uh, hot to uh, filter dry. We're going to pull the vacuum from both sides. Yeah, you can pull from one side, but it takes longer when you've got especially dual evaps with all the capillary tubes, so you're better... You're better off pulling a vacuum on both sides of the system. Okay, now yellow. So let's show this my whole show my whole. Yellow's going here. Okay, to my filter, to my vacuum pump. Right here. Okay. Now my vacuum pump is a uh, five CFM, half horsepower, two stage. I recommend this one. Okay, guys. Write this model number down. Model number Tango Alpha 500. It's a good one. I bought it on Amazon, like 130, 140 bucks, and I love it. Okay, so now let's let's before we start, there's something important I want to tell y'all. I always begin my vacuum on my high side. The reason is is because I want to see that my low side is affected. I want to see my low side start to go into the Vacuum. The reason is, is if I do that and I see this happen, I know I don't got no restriction. I didn't create no restriction. But if I'm noticing that I'm pulling a vacuum and I'm not seeing anything happen on here, I better stop and recheck my work. So let's see if Brother B knows what he said. So let's open this side up. Now notice my low side begin to dip. Put it down just a little bit more for the camera. Y'all notice my low side is beginning to dip now. It's going into the vacuum. So now that I know that that's going to happen, I'm going to help it out and open it up fully. So now both sides is open, fully open. I'm tight here, I'm tight here, I'm tight here, I'm tight here, and I'm tight here. All this got to be tight. Now, guys, this is a good time. This is a good time that you want to clean up this mess. Look at this garbage. The number one question people ask me all the time, Brother B, how long do you do your vacuum? What does the book say? The book says 30 minutes, right? This is the Brother B answer. Clean this crap up, put it in your truck, and then when all of this is done, you charge Brother Bill, uh, Brother Rick, then you, that's when you turn the vacuum off. I put the harness for the compressor. Okay, but we got to start cleaning up. I know it doesn't. That's going to be added to the compressor too. Oh, you're talking about the PTC? Yeah. No, that's not really added. It's because it's with a plug. You're right there. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's clean up it. It's a little situation. Okay, guys, look, uh, any questions so far? Because the, the this is live. We're not going to we're not gonna fake with the vacuum pump. We're really going to do it. So it's going to take like 20 minutes, 25 you know, until we clean all this up. You guys are more than welcome to stick around, but it's live. And you can see us actually put the charge. If you got to go, I understand. I appreciate you coming this far. But look, y'all y'all see me do it. I'm not the best. I'm not the king. But it's simple. It's, it's easy. Just take your time. Think about it. Don't be intimidated. Use the right tools. It, like, I don't like turbo torch. You see how it, it, it put fire everywhere. It almost burnt down the fridge. The minute I went, I said, Sonia, I have complete control. Find what works for you and, and become comfortable with it and charge appropriately. Yo, bro, I charge, I charge for that compressor. I charge on this, like six. This could be one minute, like seven.
You're going to pay me though? Send me a box. They may not pay you though. Yeah. Any questions, guys? No, man. You've been great. Y'all like the, the class? Y'all like in the class so far? Definitely, man. <laughs> it's a flashback to uh. Go ahead and put it in. Why don't you put that in while I put in my tools? So we can start cleaning up. Rick is going to talk you through the inverter board, guys. I'm going to start picking up this mess. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, here is the, the inverter board. Um, again, because of the air cord we got, one of them was saying that there was a low current error. Low current could be one of two things. It could either be the compressor or the inverter board. So I ordered both and installed the inverter board and it didn't change the operation of the compressor. So definitely I had to wait for the compressor and I've had a lot of issues. We ordered it and the company that shipped it somehow canceled the shipment. Then the second one, that discharge line was broken. Uh, this is the third compressor here. So we've been having a lot of issues trying to get this thing repaired. So the inverter board goes here. Um, I have a video, if you haven't watched it, where I talked about the Samsung refrigerator and compared this one that had multiple boards, uh, one, two, three, four, and then two other boards over here. And one of the reasons why it had so many boards is because it had the family hub, the, the, the tablet on the front of the unit. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in. This one plug here is, is the, uh, sorry, I was talking the wrong one. This one plug here is, is for the compressor. Uh, power supply coming in. So this one has three wires on it. This is the ones that's going down to the compressor. And this one is the power coming into this board. And then the final plug on this side is the communication from the main board, which is telling the compressor to run on high speed or not to run at all. Once you put that in, this board just fits right in and snaps in place. Put some light there. Just shadow up and you see. And then set these down in and it just snaps in place, no screws whatsoever. You can see it. And that's it. it just snaps in place and that's it so because of these tabs there's these little tabs up here y'all they got to go in these tabs okay that's it you hooked it up yeah so it's up. okay the vacuum how the vacuum is looking look where she's at guys she's looking good one thing i will tell you you will if you got a leak right oh let me get the light for y'all let me explain something to y'all. If y'all got a leak, right? Y'all won't see these, this uh, go into that vacuum like that. It will have a hard time trying to get down here because you got air escaping through the hole. So it will have a hard time to get so uh, into such a vacuum. So that's a good sign. When you see it come down here to about 30, it, it, that's a good sign. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, what are you doing down here? Trying to clean the plug that's damaged. It's all separate. Okay. We're almost done with the vacuum, guys. Sorry, I it up. Okay. No, it's okay. It's just, uh, the hose is hanging on Remember earlier, guys, we were talking about the compressor studs. These are them right here. We found them. They go in those grommets, and then you secure them. That helps. That helps from the compressor rocket. Think about it. You ever. If you fail to put these in, think about it. This thing gets uh, delivered or the custom removes, 
and the customer gets like a moving company and like that thing ain't secured or something and they lay it down or whatever, or they move it and you transport, you know, that compressor back there just after crazy, you know, you could like pull on the line and you can bust it, create a restriction, a leak, whatever. So definitely good. We're gonna put, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tight, tighten these into those little dampers. Rick's down there fighting with that plug. And where's the Phillips? Where's the Phillips? Somebody had a question at 126. They said, before you started soldering, I'm guessing you flushed the system with nitrogen. Yes. Can you explain? Yes. When the, with whoever the iPhone user is, listen, when the system is open, right? And the, and the filter dryer is gone, right? The system is open. It's at that time that you want to, from your process stub right down here, you want to you want to blow nitrogen through the system so that through my yoder and through my three-way, through here and through here, I get nitrogen coming from both sides. That's how you that's how you flush the system. But th this is uh, going to be recorded, so you could go back and see us when we got to that stage. Any other questions? Thank you, Alpha, for the question. I didn't see how you determined the compressor was bad. Oh, you got to check in the beginning, Peter. What other colors represents types of refrigerants? Um, I only see red on R600. A 134A, they don't really label it like that. I love the idea of leaving the connector. Soldering that close to the connector. Wait, I love the idea of leaving the connector. Solder. Yeah, you answered them all? I answered all of them. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know about that. All right, so we're good here. Let's end the vacuum now, guys. And this is the point of, of no return. So first thing we want to do, we want to close these. Let's close them. Okay, we're going to close all the way, nice and tight. Okay, now, now that it's closed, what we want to do, let me get this camera going. We want to turn this off. And we want to monitor these bad boys. And we want to make sure that they don't move. Okay. So this guy's down here at 30, and this one is so close to that. Uh, it's actually touching the, the little brass here. So we want to make sure that they stay just there. See, that one's actually touching the brass. It's, it's, it's lower than the zero. And then this one, right on that 30. So we want to make sure we meet them right there. It's actually below, right on the 30 head. All right, so let's put this guy over here. Let's leave him alone, and we're going to wait a couple minutes. And again, the reason for that is, is that if we have a leak, our pressures are going to rise. They're not going to want to remain in that vacuum. They're going to want to go up to zero. So the fact that they hold in there, that's a good sign. Final step we want to do is we want to charge the unit. Now, you probably asking, how do you know how much we're going to put? Well, we have to go inside of the fridge and on the label of the fridge, it's gonna tell us how much refrigerant it is. I wanna show them that. Bear with me, guys. I'll show you this up. Well, can you open that door for me? Sure. Hold on, guys. Okay, so if you guys notice, right, here's model, here's model, refrigerant, voltage, amps, six max amps. Our design pressure is 120, okay? It was manufactured 2017. So where's our charge? Right there, Fifth, uh, two ounces, 1.98. Does everybody see that? 1.98 grams and- four Yes. Of 56 grams oh, or 56, 56 grams or 
is 1.98 ounces. 1.98 ounces or 56 grams. All right. Let's make sure that our vacuum is still holding good, guys. Suki, Suki, sing to me, baby. That's a good sign, guys. That's what y'all want to see, you heard? Right there. Everybody with me? That's what yes, you sir. The class is it. Brother, let's go ahead now and give it the charge. I'll let you handle that part. I want to. I want to see you do that. Part. Let's go. Go ahead, bro. All right. Good time today. We got ourselves one of these small scales. You can buy these food grade scales. Vulcan uh, sells a whole kit, which has the hoses. Just to keep it on there. Not really need to so this particular scale, when you turn it on has uh, units on it and the units will uh, give a second to set. The units will allow you to, uh, let me set it down. So that one's a zero and the units here right grams. now is set in the grams. So we're gonna leave it on grams because it said 56 grams. So what you do now is you put the tank on there and uh, I'll put these pieces up. Vulcan also sells these two pieces as well as the, as the hose you use to vent the system. Uh, one of them is just a hand valve so that when you screw it onto the tank, you can control the gas coming out. The other one is a weight that holds the tank upside down so you can charge this as a liquid. So right now it tells me I have 661.2 grams. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear it out. Tear it out is supposed to set it all to zeros. Now I'm going to do that again just before I charge it, but I want to show you. See, it says zero even though I got gas in there. Because when the Freon leaves this tank, this the pressure of the tank is going to drop. So we want to watch this thing minus 56 grams. So um, the only thing on this hose is it would be nice to have a hose that has a low loss fitting on it, a hand valve. So when we pull a vacuum on it, we could shut off the hose right here as we move it from the vacuum pump and this stays into a vacuum. So we're going to lose a little bit. Of, we're going to get just a little bit of air in our system, which won't hurt at this time. But um, I prefer to use a lock ring fitting. So uh, I'm sorry, not a lock ring, a low loss fitting. So here now, again, because I added the hose, I've changed uh, the weight of this. So I'm going to go ahead and tear it out again. So it reads zero. And remember, we're going to do 56 grams. So I'm going to open this up. And it's calibrated to zero. So as this refrigerant leaves this hose. Now I've already put like 3.8 grams into the hose, not into the refrigerator. So I'm only gonna let the gas come in on one side and I'm gonna let the gas flow until 56 grams leaves this unit and goes into the refrigerator. So as we watch it, it's counting up. I'm, I guess it's backwards for you guys, but it's 12.6, 13, 14, 15. Um, I'm gonna open up the high side just a little bit to try to speed this the charging process. Yeah, 24. Yeah, 25, 26. Now when it says 56, I still have some refrigerant in my yellow hose. So I actually wanna shut it off right here on the hand valve. So that I know that 56 left the tank and that it all goes into the refrigerator. So uh, I'm letting it go. And these food grade scales from Amazon are only like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. They're not expensive at all. Are you charging the system with the refrigerator off or is it running? Yeah, yes. Yep. Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, I went to 56.6. I didn't shut it off, but the 0.6 isn't going to make it. Well, I actually went to 56.9 or whatever. So that refrigerant now has already left the tank. There is some still in the yellow hose. So uh, 
Now, when we start up the refrigerator, we'll let it suck out the remainder out of that yellow hose when we're going to fire it up. So we need to run that wire to the compressor so we can fire this fridge up. Sure. So guys, here's the compressor's relay. We're gonna put it on. Right, it's, it's like a relay. It's this particular unit because it uses an inverter board. It's just a connector. That's true. That's in there. This guy. And all he's doing is plugging the compressor to the refrigerator, remove the harness to get that compressor out. So now, Wait, at a minimum, bro, I did tell the guys I was going to do this, and they're driving me crazy. Let me just do this. It take once. I ain't going to bolt it down, but at a minimum. Never mind. It's slow, bro. We'll do it later. We'll do it when it's possible. We'll bolt it down after, yeah. Okay, so uh, plug the fridge. Okay. All right, now, guys, look at our PSIs. And it doesn't look like it, but they're both equal. They're both running about 30, uh, well, actually, yeah, close to 30 PSI. This is uh, R600 at about room temperature. That is the pressure that it's at. There's our plug. Now, guys, before I plug this in, this compressor is a pump. So what's going to happen is on one side, you're going to see this come down here. And then on the other side, you're going to see it raise up. So you're going to see your low side go down, your high side shoot up. That, that lets you know that it's circulating in the free arm. So on the low side, we're looking for about 8 to 15 inches to a vacuum. And the high side, we're probably looking about 60 to 80 PSI. All right, here goes the plug-in. All right, she just plugged Take in. a second to fire up. You know, these Samsung's take a little while, guys. They have built-in time delay on the compressor, so when you first plug it in. But our condenser fan kicked on. Compressor just kicked on. Look at our pressures. Notice, notice our low side going down to zero. You see that? What did you say high side should be? Uh, 60 to 80. Look at our low side. Look at how our low side. Now watch what's going to start happening to our high side. Now, remember... Most people are used to charging by pressure. It's not accurate, especially on the variable speed compressor. And if both evaporators are open or not, that's why you want to weigh your refrigerant in. Um, it'll take a little time before the pressures inside there get equalized. You see we're about just below 10 inches in the vacuum, almost 12 inches in the vacuum. The high side will steadily increase. Um, that's just below 50 now. It probably goes as high as 60 to 70 psi. It all depends on uh, the ambient temperature, the refrigerator outside. Um, if Brandon can take that around while it's running, let's just show you how to get into the diagnostics where the error codes were. And I don't think I cleared the error codes out of the system. So let's see what, what happens here. Can you bring that around? And I'll sure. On. They're probably going to give you an error, bro, because our three way ain't hooked up. Oh, you hooked it up? I you got it connected? Yes, got it. All right. Are we going around? Yeah, I'm going to do the display on the family help. Okay, we're at the hub now, bro. So in the family hub, we're going to wake it up. Then you can see what's inside the fridge. There's no food because of the... Uh, uh, because of the economy. No, because the fridge broke. Yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, I have errors doing this. Sometimes my finger, like, I don't know if it's got enough oil in it or not. You want to scroll on, on here to find um, your fridge manager. Let's see if you can see that, the fridge manager. When you get on fridge manager, you're gonna tap it once. And this is where the customer sets the settings. But just the upper right-hand corner, which one to tap it should be six times. And this is the one I always have a problem with and Brandon might have to do it. Oh, it did it. It went into engineering mode. And so it's got fridge function test, panel function test, sense information. Fridge function test is to test the functions of the refrigerator. That's where we're gonna get the errors. Panel function test is just to check this panel. 
So I'm gonna go here, fridge function test. And it says engineer mode. If we look down here in the bottom right hand corner, it says error history. Wait, 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 you're going too fast. Okay, there we go. And then if you look over here, error sensor, ice maker fridge, error compressor. Now I don't know why the ice maker gave the error unless it's just because the compressor failed and it wasn't cooling. But here's our compressor failure. It tells us on 11 5 on, on November uh, 5th, 2022, at 8 37, it gave the error of a, of a faulty compressor. So I had cleared it out once before. And if you look right here above my finger, um, it says clear error. So I'm going to clear the error list. So this way, I could go into this other setting here called self diagnostics. And when you press that, you look up here, it does a countdown. You know what? I it's hard. Know. It's really hard yeah. to see it. Let me see if I can just hold it here. You got countdown 49 seconds. Um, let me see if I can show it. There it goes. So it does a countdown on the engineering mode here. And then uh, this is a list of errors. So if you had an error, it has all these numbers here. And it tells you if you get number 27, there's a damper heater error and all these other errors here. So uh, I know it's backwards, I apologize, but uh, these are just a list of the, the tests that it makes. And right now it just says, see, if nothing appears here within the 18 seconds, then we're good. There's no errors in this refrigerator. It means our compressor, our inverter board, and all the components in the refrigerator have passed the test. So if you look here, we got about six seconds left. Three, two, one. And self-diagnostic finished, and there were no errors. I cleared the errors out, and luckily we haven't had any errors. That's a good thing. Now there are other buttons here, load status system info, but that video is already online. I'm not going to go over all those steps again, but that is how you do it. And then if you just want to get out, you hit home, and it brings us back to the unit that tells us right now that we're only at 74 degrees inside the refrigerator because we haven't started cooling down much yet. Okay. Yes. I think we did it, man. So um, we're pretty much done now. We just need to clean up, put everything else back together. And uh, if anybody has any questions, otherwise we're gonna we're gonna end it here and we'll upload this video probably by by the end of the weekend. Rick, I have a question, please. Make sure y'all talk. Does, does the size of the um of the gauges, um, it matters or because? Well, the hoses matter. Um, gauges, remember, we're using the R134A gauge. I'm but sorry, I meant to say the hoses. Yeah, the pressure, the pressure of the gauges, it doesn't matter because pressure is pressure. So um, the hoses though, this R600, it, the grams are much smaller. And, uh, you know, if you use real large hoses and real long hoses, that's not good. Now Vulcan has updated the hoses for their charging setup, um, which are real small hoses, a little bit more accurate way to manage the refrigerant. But if you can see, we're using a regular set of gauges on this job and it works just fine. Um, but you do have to be mindful of the gas and, and when you handle this refrigerant. One thing I wanted to bring up is this can, this can is a very thin can. It's not like when you buy other refrigerants in a heavy uh, steel tank. Um, I had one of these in my shop. A guy was charging a mini fridge with this and it fell off, the, off the, the bench that he was working on and punctured a hole right inside this can. I recommend that when people use this gas is that you get those beer cozies, you know, those foam things you take when you got a beer at the beach and you want to keep your beer cold. You put the foam cozies you get two of them, you put one on the top end, cut the bottom off and then put another one underneath. This will protect the can from getting too hot in your truck and also prevent or reduce the damage to this tank and puncturing. Because if you do puncture, you're gonna lose all this refrigerant and you could get frostbite. It is very dangerous handling refrigerants if you're not used to handling them. So I hope I answered your question, Jonas. Yes, you did, thank you. So now, we sucked all the refrigerant out. I just closed the low side gauge while I was talking to you. I didn't do it on camera, but I just closed this. We're still running in a vacuum, but it sucked all the refrigerant out of the yellow hose. So I can disconnect the yellow hose from my tank. 
And now we're just running the refrigerator. So we're pretty much done with this unit, except for cleaning up, putting the panels on. Um, we'll answer any questions you guys got in the comments of the video if you want. Other than that, um, we're done for today, and you guys have a good weekend. Thanks, guys, man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much, guys. No problem. Y'all take care, guys. You too. Appreciate it. Thank you. See you guys next month. Thank right. you. Thank you. All right. Take care. I'll do some hot dogs on the grill.